Point of use, or otherwise known as POU, here at this hospital is made by OmniCell. Point of use is a medical command, Office of the Surgeon General initiative, who paid for the system back in 1999 and 2000. This hospital's on-hand POU hardware inventory is valued at just over $5 million. The benefits of point of use is to control access, lower supplied overhead costs, provide inventory control and automatic replenishment requests to material branch, pharmacy, and departments, provides a wide variety of reports for supervisory personnel like usage, misuse, transaction history by item, user or location, medication override and discrepancy reports, to name just a few. Who uses POU? Authorized staff with a point of use user ID for a given area or areas, Department of Nursing personnel, ward and clinic staff, MDS and pharmacy restock technicians, as well as some physicians. OmniCell suppliers connect via system interfacing architecture through the OmniCenter server to two of the hospital's legacy systems. The Defense Medical Logistics Support System, also known as DIMLS, and the Composite Healthcare System, also known as CHCS. For most of the hospital, med surge supplies restocking requirements are determined daily at 600 hours, and restock orders are in turn sent to DIMLS for replenishment. Pharmaceutical restocks are sent directly to the inpatient or outpatient pharmacies for replenishment. OmniCell receives a continual feed from patient admissions through CHCS, medication order information from the Accentris doctor order entry, and manual scripts are provided to the OmniCell via the CHCS interface. In the inpatient pharmacy, a pharmacist reads the Accentris information on one screen and inputs that script into CHCS where it is sent up to the OmniCell RX cabinet to populate the medication order list. If you do not see your med order listed in the OmniCell, you need to call the inpatient pharmacy to see if there is a problem with it. The point of view system was built by nursing for nursing. It provided the opportunity to re-examine initial stockage levels, thus lowering supply overhead costs. In a scanned area like this, it is the material branch tech's responsibility to inventory and ensure all items are scanned and restocks are ordered to bring the supplies back up to full stockage or PAR levels. In the OmniCell point of use cabinet, that responsibility falls on the user to ensure that the green button is pushed for every item taken in the quantity taken. If this is done, the system will ensure that the OmniCell cabinet's stockage levels are kept up to par levels at all times. On the OmniCell computer keypad, enter in your user ID code. On the POU user ID registration form, user IDs can be 5 to 12 characters in length and is neither case nor character sensitive. If you leave that block blank on the form, the user will be given the first letter of the user's last name followed by the last four of their social security number unless they have chosen a different user ID on their POU user ID registration form. User IDs that are all words are not recommended as they can be slow and cumbersome to type out on the keypad and simplistic user IDs are not allowed, such as 11111, 12345, or ABCDE, etc. When submitting the form, follow the instructions. Read and sign both front and back of the form, and then have your supervisor sign and approve your level of access. Greater than 60 days of user ID inactivity will cause it to automatically drop off the system, and a new POU user ID form will have to be approved and submitted. Select your patient from the local patient list by typing in the first couple letters of their last name on the keyboard to take you to that part of the list, or by touching the up or down arrow keys. If you don't see your patient on the local list, select the global list tab at the bottom of the screen. Selecting the patient from the global list will move it to your local list and leave it there until it times out due to non-use. The Supply OmniCell cabinet doors will now unlock as soon as the patient is selected. 
Open the door and take the item or products you want. Press the green reorder button for each item you take. Small items such as needles or fittings may be located in the supply drawers. Press the green reorder button for these items as well. When taking larger quantities, after pressing the green reorder button once, enter in on the keypad the quantity you are taking. The quantity entered on the keypad always overrides the number of preceding button pushes. If you entered a mistake, use the backspace key on the upper left corner of the numerical keypad to clear the wrong quantity entry. When taking an item, note the amount remaining displayed on the screen. If it differs from what you see in the bin, select the Change Bin Level button to the right of the screen and enter the actual on-hand quantity. Remember, the OmniCell will not reorder if it thinks it has enough product on hand that is above the typical two-thirds reorder point. If finished, touch the Exit button to exit the Omni Supplier. To find an item, select and touch the Find Item Kit button to the left of the screen. Type in the first couple of letters on the keyboard of the item you are looking for to take you to that part of the list. Then use the up or down arrow keys to search further. Once selected, all the lights on the Omnicell where the product is located will flash. One by one, the lights on the button bars will go out, leading you to the button bar where the item is located. If you wish, you may select and take the item by pressing the green reorder button. Remember, the flashing green reorder button is only telling you where the item is and not that you have to take it. The return item feature is used to put items back into the Omni Supplier that originally were removed from that same Omni Supplier. Never use this feature to put away new items into the Omni Supplier or items from another Omni Supplier. For new items, Use the normal or supplemental restock menu selections under the inventory menu selection. To return an item, first select your patient from the local patient list. If you do not know who the item was taken for, find and select floor chart. On the left side of every button bar and down the center of the supply drawers are square yellow return item buttons. When the yellow return button is pressed, all the lights on the row will flash, indicating that it is in a return mode. Press the green reorder button for the item and quantity you wish to return. For large quantity returns, after pressing the green reorder button once, use the keypad to enter in the larger quantity. If finished, touch the exit button to exit the Omni Supplier. Cycle Count and Emergency Orders if a bin is empty, does the Omni Supplier know it? If a product has been removed without pressing the green reorder button, the Omni Supplier may think that it still has product on hand when in fact it does not. If this is the case, it will not send a restock order to Material Branch or Pharmacy to replenish the bin. If time is of the essence, go to one of the neighboring wards Omni Cells and see if they have some on hand you could use for the procedure. However, if you are planning on contacting Material Branch to place an emergency request for the item, you will need to perform the following steps first. To verify on-hand bin quantities and locate the item ID, do the following steps. After logging on, touch the main menu button in the lower left of the screen. Next, select the Inventory Menus button and finally, select the Cycle Count button in the top right corner of the screen. Press the green reorder button of the item to be counted. Enter in on the keypad how many items remain in the bin. If the bin is empty, enter zero on the keypad. If you have to make an emergency order to the Material Branch Customer Service Desk, make note of the item ID listed on the screen. You will need the number to correctly place an emergency restock order. After 2300 hours on weekdays and 1730 hours on weekends, when MDS is closed, it will be faster to go to a neighboring ward's Omni supplier 
and perform the find item function to see if the Omni supplier has the product you need. When finished with your cycle count and no further transactions are needed, touch the exit button. The Pharmacy Omni Supplier differs from the MedSurge Omni Supplier in that it is a pre-select system. This means that the doors will not unlock until you have logged in, selected the patient, and the medications. This is a typical configuration. The large panel in the auxiliary cabinet on the left is where the narcotic tube X dispenser is located. Only the narcotic vault custodian and the evening night supervisors have access to the dispenser itself. This means that narcotics located in the dispenser do not have to be counted during the end of shift inventories. Narcotic tube X's that originate from the dispenser are returned to the external return bin, which I will discuss later. In addition to your user ID, authorized users are required to enter a password of your choice to gain access to the pharmacy system. The first time you log onto a pharmacy Omni supplier, it will prompt you to create a password. It can be 5 to 12 characters in length and is neither case nor character sensitive. If you do not remember your password, ask your head nurse or ward master to log on and reset it under the user's menu or contact the POU system administrators. You can also at any time change your own password under the user's menu. Remember, easy to remember passwords are also ones that others looking over your shoulder will find easy to remember as well. Try using a phone number. It's easy to remember and fast to enter on the numerical keypad. Next find your patient on the local list by typing in the first few letters of their last name to go to that part of the patient list or by using the up or down arrow keys on the right side of the screen. If your patient is not on the local list, check the global list at the lower left of the screen. You may search using your up or down arrow keys or by typing in the first few letters of the last name. With the exception of discharged patients, patients selected from the global list will populate your local patient list and be there the next time you log on to the OmniRx supplier. If your patient is not on either the local or global list, you will need to create a temporary patient. Select the Add New Patient button in the upper left of the screen. When entering patient information for a temporary patient, you must have the two-digit family member profile code and the sponsor's social security number with you. This is so that the temporary patient can be matched up to the permanent patient once patient administration adds him or her to CHCS. When finished entering the information, select the green Add New Patient button and the new temporary patient will populate your local patient list. And remember, med orders will never populate against a temporary patient. In a medication Omni supplier, floor charge will only be used for removing equipment and nursing keys from the cabinet. For all medications, the patient, whether permanent or temporary, must be selected. The Remove Return Waste Med screen is used to select medications for the patient. Select the green Remove Meds button in the upper right corner of the screen. I will discuss returning meds and wasting meds later in the video. For a permanent patient with standing medication orders, this is how the medication order screen might appear and may be several screens in length. If one of your medications that you want to select is grayed out, it means that the pharmacist has approved the med order. However, he or she picked the wrong med in CHCS. This is because CHCS is a regional system and each base or post in the region enters their own stocked meds. So a given med might have five listings, each with a different CHCS number. And if the wrong one is selected by the pharmacist, it will not match the corresponding OmniCell item ID number. If you see this, call the inpatient pharmacy and they will correct the med order entry. However, since the patient we have selected, or rather created, is a temporary patient, there will not be any medication orders visible on this screen. In this case, select the medications needed by pressing the Stocked Meds tab at the bottom of the screen. The Stocked Meds list gives you visibility of the entire drug database for your pharmacy Omni supplier that you are authorized access to. You would browse this database with either the up or down arrow keys 
or by typing in the first few letters of the medication you require. For demonstration purposes, we will start by selecting phenobarbital dilution for this temporary patient. Once you have located the medication on the list, simply press the name line for it on the screen. The hospital has determined that in order to override a medication order, the situation must fall within either urgent or emergent categories. Your head nurse or ward master can provide you with a copy of the definitions that fall within these categories. The provider must be able to clinically justify the medication override within these guidelines. All med overrides are reported to the Department of Nursing on a weekly basis. If your override need meets these requirements, select Yes on the screen. The hospital has given full override authority to registered nurses and a limited override capability to LPNs. CNAs are not authorized access to medications. You must now select from one of the reasons shown on the screen. You may also select the Enter Override Reason button in the lower right of the screen. When you choose to manually enter the override reason, you can free text in a reason for the medication override i.e. pain is 8 out of 10 or blood pressure is and provide the readings. You may now enter the quantity of the medication you need. You may increase or decrease the amount using the plus or minus buttons on the screen or you may use the keypad to enter in a quantity. When finished select OK. This indicates that you have selected one dose of the phenobarbital dilution. If there were more medications for this patient you could select them now by repeating the same process. If this is the only medication you need, select the Remove Now button in the upper right of the screen. Now simply follow the flashing lights to locate the drawer or bin where the medication is located. This first drawer type is the dispensing drawer located below the narcotic Tubex dispenser. Some Tubex are dropped within inches of the back of the drawer and when you pull the drawer out the Tubex may roll to the back of the drawer. So if you don't see it, check the back of the drawer. Never attempt to reach up into the dispenser from the open drawer. If you do, intrusion flags will pop up on the POU system administrator's desktop indicating which user was accessing the cabinet at the time. Non-controlled medications may be located in medium security drawers. Omni suppliers may be configured with both 24 and 12 bin medium security drawers. Open the bin with the flashing light and only take that amount which you have entered in the quantity screen. Opening any other bin creates a null transaction which is reported to each department's head nurse on a weekly basis. When pill strip packs are stocked, they should be separated by the pharmacy tech before placing them in the bin. However, if they fail to do so and you tear off one and stuff the remaining strip back into the bin without the lid closing properly, problems can ensue. You might be able to push the overstuffed bin back in and the drawer above it will force it closed. However, when the drawer above is opened, the overstuffed bin will pop up behind the open drawer. When an attempt is made to close that upper drawer, it will bump into the open lid. Do not force the drawer closed. Doing so will severely damage the bin lid and if that bin lid is forced up under the drawer's open close sensor arm, it can be broken off as well. If the drawer does not detect it is closed, no other actions can be performed on the Omni supplier until repaired. So if a drawer won't close, don't force it and immediately contact the POU system administrator or after hours, the inpatient pharmacy. Some items may be located in the auxiliary cabinet connected to the RX Omni supplier. Press the button once regardless of how many items you are taking. Doing so represents the same action as opening or closing a lid in a medication drawer. If you fail to press the button and have more items pre-selected, the Omni supplier will not guide you to your next item until the button is pushed. Controlled items will be located in high security bins. This is a 12 bin drawer. These are locked bins and allow access only to the bin that is indicated by the flashing green light. Attempting to open any other bin creates a null transaction 
which also shows up on the weekly null transaction report. When taking an item from a high security bin in which the light is flashing, the bin will be unlocked and open freely. However, during cycle counts, the Omni supplier does not know which bin you want to count. You must gently lift the lid until it stops, drop it back down at which time you will hear it unlock, and you then can open it up fully for counting. Do not try to initially force the bin open. Doing so will warp the lid and render the bin unusable. Damaged drawers are not covered under the maintenance contract and the unit will have to submit a SEEP request to replace the damaged drawer. This drawer is a six bin high security drawer. It is typically used to stock large in size or quantity controlled medications. These are heavy drawers with heavy lids. Slamming the lid or drawer closed will break the tab and the lid handles to the point where they will break off and render the bin unusable. So please take the time to carefully close the bin lid and drawer. Again, damaged drawers are not covered under the maintenance contract and the unit will have to submit a SEEP request to replace the damaged drawer. Current hospital policy requires that a blind pre-count of controlled drugs must be completed prior to dispensing. The bin lid is open and contents are visible. Before taking any meds from the bin, enter the quantity on hand in the bin and press OK to continue. You may now remove the dose indicated. You may also increase or decrease the amount taken at this point in time with the plus or minus buttons. When done, close the bin and drawer. If you have any additional items, follow the flashing lights to the next item, otherwise press exit. If the amount you entered on the pre-count screen does not agree with the OmniCell database, the Omni supplier will provide an audible series of beeps and show you this error question on the screen. At this point, remember the bin is still open and you have the option to press the no button and re-enter the correct amount for the bin on the previous screen. But if the amount you counted is correct, enter yes and continue the process. Remember, you are the person who only discovered the discrepancy. If the amount you entered did not agree with the Omni supplier, but was the correct count when you entered the bin, you have created a discrepancy. A discrepancy report will print out as you exit the Omni supplier. The discrepancy report will have the transaction that you just completed, along with the last two transactions that took place in that specific bin. This gives you a short history of transactions to assist you in resolving the discrepancy. The discrepancy should be resolved at the earliest opportunity and no later than the end of shift. Do not wait. Resolve it immediately. The Provost Marshal loves to get involved in unresolved discrepancies. If you have an unused and undamaged narcotic tubex which came from the Omni Dispenser, take the following steps. Log in to the Omni Supplier and select the patient that the narcotic tubex was taken out for. Select Return Meds at the right hand side of the screen, then select the medication you are returning from the list. The default return quantity is 1, but you can increase it if you are returning more at this time. Now select Return Meds Now button in the upper right corner of the screen. At this point, you will need someone with witness access credentials to enter in their user ID and password in order to witness the return. A witness will be required whenever you are stocking, returning, or wasting controlled medications. The green light will now be flashing on the external return bin. Go ahead and open the bin lid. Do not place the tubex in the return bin yet there are still two things that must be done first. Next, free text in the reason for the return or touch the list of reasons button in the lower left of the screen. Once entered, press the OK button in the upper right corner of the screen. Now scan the Tubex, either while it's on its cradle or remove the scanner from the cradle to scan the Tubex. Now you may place the Tubex in the external return bin and close the return bin lid. The narcotic vault custodian 
can open the return bin to access return tubexes for restock back into the dispenser. Partial dosing and wasting medications are the two ways to document the waste of controlled items. Partial dosing medications may be used if you know prior to the dose administration that you will only use part of the dose that you are removing from the Omni supplier. At the point in the issue process when you have completed the pre-count and you are ready to remove the dose, select the Waste Partial Dose button. Enter the desired dose in either volume or weight. The OmniCell will calculate the amount of medication you need to administer in order to receive the desired dose and the remaining amount that will be pre-wasted by the provider. At this time, a witness must enter their user ID and password to continue. Once the witness has entered their user ID and password, the documentation of waste is completed. You may now remove the dose and close the bin and drawer. If you are the witness, make sure that you actually witness a waste. The I Trust You Buddy system can burn you when a diversion occurs and you were determined to be the witness for the supposed waste. Wasting medications is the second method of documenting the waste of controlled items and is done through the waste meds function. You would use this method if a medication was dropped, contaminated, discontinued, or not fully utilized on the patient for some other reason. After logging back into the RX Omni supplier, select the patient the medication was originally removed for, and then select the Waste Meds button on the right hand side of the screen. Next select from the med list the medication you are planning to waste. Now free text in the amount to be wasted and the reason. You may also select from the list of reasons button in the lower left of the screen. Select one of the reasons listed on the screen or you may select previous screen and free text in your reason for waste in the meds reason box. You can also select a pre-canned reason and free text in additional information after it. Again, a witness is required and must now enter their user ID and password. Make sure you do not waste the item before the witness has the opportunity to verify the product being wasted. Now waste the product in the method you had indicated and per unit policy. Select Record Waste Now to complete the waste documentation. You can now exit the RX Omni supplier. This training is available on the Madigan SharePoint site. Select the Public Sites tab. Then, under the Education and Training column, select Point of Use POU. Once on the Point of Use page, select Shared Documents on the left of the page. Under Shared Documents, you may select a variety of PowerPoint POU training documents to include this video. If you are a supervisor who has the department's authority to authorize your staff's access to OmniCell, the POU user ID registration form and the instructions are located here as well. If you have any point of use questions, problems, or requests for an item addition or deletion, please contact either of the point of use system administrators. Our office is located in the Logistics CMS hallway at the corner where the robots cross the hallway. Thank you.